Do we really have to do this again? Really? Like another season in charge of Wickham? Well, I suppose so. Welcome back to another episode of Attempting Not To Get Sacked. And we're in our new season. And we're in League One for the first time in this series. And I can't wait because it's been a horrible summer. And I just really want to get through the season now. Although it's my fault that we've had the worst summer ever. Because I was being a bit lax today. He's called thinking, oh, I'll take my time signing players. Didn't realise the season started earlier because of the World Cup. And with about a week to go before the start of the season in the Carabao Cup. I realised I had five first team players. So yeah, anyway, welcome back. In the last episode, we wrapped up our relegation season by losing. 4-0 away at champions Bournemouth and I just actually couldn't wait to finish the season and now we're at a new fresh start we can start again I've still got only five first team players I mean we really need to sign some players sign some players let's start off with the best news of the season Portsmouth got relegated with me last year so that was uh, great I'm gonna have to face them again this season when it came to the end of year review as well I actually looked we actually had a really good start to the season and then someone managed to get relegated from that how can I win my first three away games and then somehow finished second bottom. And also the biggest win and the match to remember happened in those first five games as well. I mean, what a season it's been then. It shows you how badly we performed after January because Daryl Horgan still got in team of the year despite the fact he left in January. One assist. He got one assist. Really? <laughs> the board also came to me with their expectations and they only expect us to finish top half this season. Lads, lads, lads. You might as well have just put nothing there because that is literally the easiest objective of the season. I can't wait for three episodes time where I say how much I hate this team again. Darius Charles has also decided to ride off into the sunset and retire over the summer. Uh, I wanted to say a few words on Darius Charles. Um, I mean, he was here for the two seasons. Didn't really achieve much though. Cheers, Jeff. It finally hit me the standard of teams that we are going to be playing next season as Newport County got promoted from League 2. Fantastic. Honestly, this is going to be such a shit division. I also got a media report that said that Kieran Brown won't get into the Northern Ireland squad while he's playing in League 1 with Wickham. Hold on, let me just get my notebook and just write down another player's international career I've ruined. And also, I found out Steve McLaren is the Northern Ireland boss. Steve McLaren. Not really sure why they got a Dutchman managing the Northern Ireland team. Oh my oh word. My oh. We also managed to break the record for the lowest amount of goals scored in a league season as we only managed 30 in 46 championship games. At least the team is modelled on me. You know, I'm a low scorer as well. IQ tests, females replying to me. I mean, the list goes on. And we also broke the record for the lowest amount of points in the season. If anything, it's just been a record-breaking season, really. Adabar Akinfema is now officially retired from professional football. And, uh, you know, as I said, like in the last few episodes, he is probably one of the worst strikers I've ever used. Look, I know he's a meme and everything, but Jesus Christ, like, he didn't score a single goal last year. Kamil Mijek has also signed a new two-year deal with the club, and uh, he actually played quite well for Coventry last season in League One. Uh, they didn't get promoted, of course, uh, but I've decided to hand him a new deal because I think he's going to play a lot more this year. And he's definitely going to be playing a lot more games for me next year because I sold Ryan Allsop to QPO who just got relegated for the Premier League. I mean, I can't really turn down the transfer fee, which could go up to £1 million. Daniel Gailai has also left the club to join Tranmere Rovers, who are currently in League 2, for £29,000. Uh, he did play in one Livecom game. We lost, which isn't really a surprise. And after I took Colder Silver off the transfer list, I sold him to Livingston for 150k. I'm actually going to be serious. That may well be one of the best transfers I've ever made. Got him on a free, realised I signed the wrong brother, played him six times, sent him on loan to Scotland for the year, sold him for 150k profit. Honestly, I should have done economics at university. I'm bloody brilliant at it. Our standing in the game also went down last year, which isn't really a surprise to me. So you're telling me that players are going to look at Wickham Wonders and think I'm not going to join them now? I mean, yeah, you join, join the club, lads. I, I wish I hadn't joined them either. So the Carabao Cup first round draw was made and I can't wait to see who we get drawn against because we seem to get knocked out in the first round every single year. And we got drawn away to Stevenage, which I mean, isn't actually a bad tie for once. We've actually got a winnable game. So five of my first teamers from last season have left the club after their contracts ran out over the summer. And Ryan Tafazzoli, Anthony Stewart, Dominic Gabe, David Wheeler and Nick Freeman have all left. I mean, to be fair, looking back on it now, I probably should have kept one or two of them because I ended up with like very few players after this. We also decided to sell Kieran Brown to Reading for 500k and that was another side that I made on a free transfer and I've made a profit on him. I'm really good at this transfer stuff really. I might just get another man to actually manage the matches because then we might actually get some wins on the pitch. No, I'll get the wins in the transfer negotiations, thank you very much. The board also came to me with my performance review and they said that last season's successes remain fresh in their memories. Yeah, last season's successes, alright. Jason McCarthy has also left the club to join Warsaw for 110k. He was a right back that I didn't really use as much as I would have hoped last year and then I thought I could use him this year and then Warsaw came with a bid and then I I thought, yeah, see you later, mate. So when it was about two weeks before the start of the season, I was asked to submit a squad list for the upcoming season and I wanted to register some players. I thought, okay, yeah, well, I'll get that done. Realised I have very few players in the first team. And then after looking at the squad, I got the promotion odds come through. Found out that they're predicting us to finish bottom again. Well, oh, for 
So I put in an ambitious bid during the summer to sign Malik Wilkes from Hull City for 1.2 million. And he rejected it, saying that he had better teams interested in him. I was interested to see which teams were actually into him. And it's Sevilla. Yeah, I'm really going to compete with Sevilla, aren't I? And hold on, why is Sevilla interested in a winger who can't even get in the whole City first team? So the game against Stevenage was also my 100th match in charge of the club. Yeah, I probably would have made it a lot quicker if I didn't get knocked out of the cup so early. Now, we'll talk about the signings. And uh, my first signing was the central midfielder because we lost quite a few over the summer. And joining us from Fleetwood Town for 400k is Adam Phillips. He looks like a pretty decent centre midfielder for this level. I mean, he didn't have a great season last year, but I mean, I, I, mean, I haven't really got much more to say on him. Played for Liverpool once as well. My second son is Niall Ennis has joined us on a permanent transfer this time and a free transfer after his Wolves contract had expired. He did play for us last season on loan, scored one goal in the championship. I think he'll absolutely rip this league apart. Because Daniel Gailai and Brian Alsop had left over the summer, it meant that I had to bring in a new goalkeeper. And joining us for 125,000 is Daniel Grimshaw. Uh, he played for whole City last year as they got promoted from League One. Uh, he only conceded 35 goals in 40 games, so a pretty decent backup for me. My fourth signing was a right back a slash centre back and Harry Clark joins us on a free transfer after his contract at Arsenal had expired over the summer. I mean, his stats don't look that great, but he's most likely going to be a backup for me and he also adds a bit of versatility to our squad. My next signing was to add some more depth to the centre-back position and I signed Robbie Condy from Lincoln who were relegated last season for 90k. I mean, looking at his stats, he's not obviously brilliant, but I mean, he adds a bit of depth to our squad that we desperately needed. My sixth signing was a very young prospect from Sheffield United who joins us on loan for the season. And Jordan Doherty uh, will play in a defensive midfield role or centre-back role. Uh, I mean, he could play either. Once again, he's just adding depth to our squad. I mean, his stats, once again, are brilliant. We made another loan signing and Will Fish joins us from Reading for the season. Uh, he's actually a fairly decent centre-back, so he may well be our third choice this year. I mean, what's his middle name? He... And one of our main signings this summer was Antif Tsongi, who joins us from Brighton on loan for the season. He could play across the back line and play in the defensive midfield roles as well, which means it adds more versatility to the squad. I mean, I feel like versatility is the word of the episode at the moment. And finally, our last signing before we go into our game against Carlisle United in this episode uh, was Kane Ramsey joins us on loan from Southampton for the season. He's going to be our main right back this year. Uh, fairly decent stats for League One level. I mean, I'm looking forward to using him, although it's another player I've signed from Southampton. I feel like I sign a lot of players from from Southampton at the moment. Now we move into our first game of the season against Carlisle United and as I have mentioned uh, we don't have too many players so I've had to set up a formation which actually fits the majority of players I've got in my squad. Kamil Bijek will start off in goal for us this season. He's going to be my number one this year. We go with a back four Sean McLaughlin, a Tosongi, a Josh Knight and a Kane Ramsey. Honestly we're going to have to find a new left back. I can't be playing a centre back at left back. The midfield four sees to start with Trevor Clark on the left, George Monker on the right and Alex Patterson and Adam Phillips playing in the middle. And I've decided to stick with the same two strikers up front that won us the game against Stevenage, so Dan Lundaloo and Noel Ennis will partner each other up front. Now, the last time I played 4-4-2, we got absolutely dicked, so if that cannot happen again, I'll be forever thankful. I feel weirdly excited. We're actually going into our first league game where I'm actually the favourite to win again. And normally this is the point where I talk about the team that we're facing. I know nothing about them at all, except that I would never go to Carlisle. But now we're favourites most of the games, we really do have to be winning matches. I'm not pissing about with this top half finish that the board won. I want promotion. The first highlight of the game came to us after about two minutes as Alex Patterson's ball found Noah Ennis and he got in behind the defence uh, but fired a shot straight at the keeper which he well saved to be fair. And then a couple of minutes later George Moncourt laid the ball off Alex Patterson and on the edge of the box he fired it wide and we were dominating the early proceedings as once again Moncourt set up Alex Patterson but then his shot was then well saved by Norman. I mean the fact that we're playing a team who have a goalkeeper with the last name Norman in the team it's astounding really. We did give up our first chance after about 13 minutes as George Tanner played in Lewis Bell and one on one with the keeper he then fired it wide. I mean that is the sort of standard we're playing against this year now. We're going to piss this league. A good one-two between McLaughlin and Nalandalu saw the former across the board into the box, but Noel Ennis's header hit the post and went wide. And despite the fact that we had one misfiring striker up front, so did Carlisle's Lewis Bell got some space in the edge of the box and then fired the ball well over the bar. And there's a good football between us. Saw Nalandalu playing Noel Ennis and then he fired it wide as well. I mean, what is going on? And half time came around and we were drawing 0 0, uh, which isn't a surprise on this series. Uh, but for some reason, Carlisle had more shots on goal than us, and yet they seem to have a higher XG than we did. But yeah, I've shown you more highlights that we had. I mean, proud of you, you've done it again. Early into the second half, Dan Nalondalu played a lovely ball over the top for Noel Ennis to run through on goal. And when he was one on one with the keeper, decided to try and chip him and Norman pushed it wide. I mean, Noel Ennis is finishing like Jessica Ennis at the moment. Actually, I'm sure she's finished better than he has. 
And then a couple of minutes later, McLaughlin got down the left-hand side again and put a lovely ball into the box, but Dan Lundelou's header was too weak and uh, the keeper saved it. It was like this time I decided to freshen things up in the team and Marcus Brown came on on the left-hand side for Trevor Clark and I pushed him into a more advanced role and Alex Samuel came on to replace Dan Lundelou, who actually wasn't even having a bad game, to be fair. And those substitution had an instant impact as none of them were involved as George Monker played the ball into Noel Ennis and he fired it into the bottom corner to give us a 1-0 lead. I mean, he's finally put the ball in the net. It's taken him like nine shots to get that into the net. I mean, Thank God I didn't blow any money on him. A lovely ball forward by Kamil Mirzek found Marcus Brown inside the Carlisle half and one-on-one -on -one with the defender managed to get past him and then fire a shot straight at Norman who managed to pull off another save. I mean, we can't score more than one goal against a guy called Norman. Genuinely, who is called Norman in this day and age? I decided to reshuffle my back line and add a bit more solidity to it so Will Fish came off the bench uh, to replace Kane Ramsey and I moved Tosongi into the right-back position. It was Sean McLaughlin again on that left-hand side as he put another wonderful ball into the box uh, but now Ennis' volley was well well caught by Norman. I mean, how on earth has he saved that? And it really was the Noel Ennis show as then he ran through on goal and then chipped the goalkeeper and this time hit the post. I mean, this guy could have had a double hat trick by now. I've shown you so many chances. How on earth has he only scored one goal? And it looked like those chances that we missed was going to bite us back in the arse as John Mellish found some space in the edge of the box, but he hit a weak shot straight into Kamil Mijek's arms. And that was the final highlight of the game as we ended up winning by a goal to nil and managed to get out of Carlisle with all three points. Thank God I don't have to come back here again. Also, my post-match thoughts on that. Noel Ennis really is going to be really shit for me this year, isn't he? I love it,